several years ago, I had a gentleman to approach me at a dulcimer festival and said that he had a story he wanted to share with me. He indicated that he might not be able to tell the story without becoming emotional, so I was a bit apprehensive when he first started talking, hoping that he wouldn't fall apart during the process. He began by saying that he bought one of my CDs as a Christmas gift for his father-in-law. The father-in-law became very fond of the CD, especially one song in particular. He said that his father-in-law would put the CD on every time he felt down, and the music would always give him a sense of peace. This man went on to say that a year or so later, his father-in-law was diagnosed with terminal cancer. There was nothing the doctors could do for him other than to make him comfortable. Well, on the day that his father-in-law passed away, he called all the family members in and said his goodbyes. And he then asked the family to put on my CD and play Sweet Hour Prayer, which had become his favorite song on the CD. He laid there and passed from this life while listening to Sweet Hour Prayer. Now, as you can imagine, I was deeply touched by the story. The man telling the story went on to say that he wasn't sharing the details of his father-in-law's passing to make me sad or to build me up because it was my music chosen as the last thing the dying man would ever listen to on earth. Instead, he said, I want you to realize that your music has an impact on people's lives, whether you realize it or not. This comment made an impression on me that day. From that moment on, I've always tried to remind myself that there are people in the audience who are touched in some way by the music I play. The songs may bring back a fond memory of a simpler time, the thought of a young love, or even the loss of a family member. Music is emotional, let's face it. I thought about the story of Sweet Hour of Prayer and began to draw some parallels between the song and the story of the dying father-in-law. The words to the song were said to have been written by a blind preacher named W. W. Walford. Now, nobody knows who Walford was because there's no record of him. A man named Thomas Solomon, who claimed to have known Walford, submitted the words to the New York Observer for publication. Several years later, William Bradbury wrote the tune that we most often associate with the words. It occurred to me that Walford, Solomon, nor Bradbury ever lived long enough to realize what a significant impact Sweet Hour of Prayer would have on Christians everywhere. Just like me, these men were unaware of just how many lives had been touched by this beautiful old hymn and how God had used them in a wonderful way to share His message with others.